Hello, everyone. How you doing this week? I'm trying to tie together a lot of the things I've been talking about because we really don't have that many voices, in my opinion, of rationality in this whole COVID debate, uh, especially now with all the stuff that's being said about the PCR test. And it really seems like you have the two extremists on either side. You have on the one side, all, all the people saying, oh, well, look, the COVID test is, you know, 99% accurate, you know, very little chance of a false positive and things like that. And then you have the other side saying, you know, it, it's only like 50% good and uh, things like that. And they're, they're saying that, oh, well, you know, it's just like flipping a coin if you actually go and look at what's happening in the real world. All these cases are being missed and everything else. And... What everyone's missing is something that I talked about on this channel years ago called the Bayesian in, uh, inference. And the Bayesian inference is about looking at all of the things to gather the uh, proper probability of it, including what's being missed here, which is the prior probability, which is when you're going into it and you're getting the test, what's the likelihood on the face of it that you have COVID? And last week, uh, I made a video about how the test is not supposed and was never supposed to be the end all and be all of whether or not you have a case of COVID and how the WHO is now saying that, you know, you should look at things like the symptoms and you should follow it up with another test and things like that. And so that's uh, what I thought I'd do here. Uh, but before I get started, just please hit like, subscribe and the bell um, and look over on the side. I still can't get which side this is. I'm <laughs> I'm not used to this setup yet. Um, but yeah, all sorts of uh, different places you can find me. Not only on YouTube, uh, but on Library or Odyssey. You know that seems to be a big one. Everyone's going to now, and the technology on that's getting a lot better. Um, and of course, all sorts of ways to donate at donate.bagosity.tv, including become a regular subscriber, getting these videos uh, early and ad free. And also, comments for the comment god, shares for the share throne. Keep this uh, video going up in the algorithms, because I think this is going to be a really important thing that uh, people need to keep in mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the same Bayesian calculator that I used in uh, that video all those years ago, and take a look at actually what we can expect out of a test like this. So really, we're starting with the prior probability. And if really you're just doing a screening, if you're doing a screening of like a random person, then you need to consider the prior probability being the prevalence of COVID-19 in that area. And if you've got a pretty good prevalence in that area, that might be 10%. And so we'd put 0.1 in there. Now, there might be other things that increase that prior, such as the symptoms that you're having, or, you know, have you been staying at home or wearing masks when you go out? Or have you been doing, you know, a lot of, you know, partying in bars or big crowds or things like that without wearing masks? All sorts of things like that can increase the prior. And that's important, as we'll see, because when you go onto the test, and if you look at my previous uh, video on this years ago when we were looking at the HIV deniers, they were like, but this is the test, and the test tells you whether you have it, and either comes back yes or no. Well, it'd be really nice if it worked that way. But the tests ain't perfect, so... And if you um, read down how to use the calculator, it tells you what all of the things are. H is the hypothesis, and in this example, they're using cancer like I did in my first video on Bayesian inference. In this case, the hypothesis is that we have COVID, or more specifically, we have a colonization of SARS-CoV-2. Um, but I'm just going to say COVID just to, just to uh, keep it simple. H prime is the hypothesis that you don't have it. And D is the datum. And in this case, the datum is going to be the fact that we've taken the test and we've gotten a positive result. So given that we have a positive result, what is the probability that we have COVID? So we're starting with the 10% prior, and then we go P of D given H, and it says it's the probability of a positive test result given that you have cancer, or in this case, COVID. This is also called the hit rate. 
Right. So if this is the if we're going to assume that we have COVID, what are the chances that the uh, test will tell us that? And so the corollary of that is the false negative. If we have COVID, but it comes back and tells us that we don't, what's the chance of that? And that seems for the PCR test to be around 15%. So that would make this 85%, 0.85. And we've talked about this, you know, making the test more or less sensitive. And talked about why, I think I talked about this in my last video last week, why you might not want the test to be any more sensitive than it is. So, um, but that seems to be about what they've landed on is a 15% false negative rate. So 0.85 here. And then if P of D given H prime, remember, remember H prime is the probability that we don't have it. And so this is the probability of a positive test result given that you do not have COVID also called the false alarm rate, or we could say the false positive rate. And that is really low for the PCR test because it's going to be picking up those RNA sequences. And again, if it's too sensitive, then it might be picking up the RNA sequences of a virus you fought off months ago because those are still going to be kind of lying around in your system and your body hasn't cleared them out yet. Um, or it could be an indication that you know, you just got it in your... So again, you have to look at this in context about what symptoms you've experienced and things like that. But as far as the test itself is concerned, uh, that's a, a really high specificity. So this false alarm rate, the false positive rate, is going to be low. It's going to be like 0 0.01. And so given all of that, what is the probability that we have COVID? if we get a positive test result. And this is the part that people keep missing. They go, oh, well, it's, you know, 99% uh, because, you know, we have, because that's how accurate the test is. And then, you know, other people say, well, no, if it's a, if there's, there's this, you know, false negative rate, then it's really 15%. Is it 15%? Is it 99%? You know, is it 50%? What is it? Well, remember, it all depends on that prior probability, which people keep ignoring. So when we hit compute, in this case, it's about 90%, right? So in this situation, if we test positive, there's a 90% chance that we have it. But if that prior is something different, it can make all the difference in the world. If it's not as prevalent, if there's only 1% of the people in your area that have it, your 1% prior, and we hit compute, now look at it. But that posterior probability our conclusion is less than 50%. And that's kind of where you get this coin toss thing in there. And so when you're doing this and you're giving a bunch of people these tests in areas where it's not as prevalent, then yeah, you're going to get this. And you'd be like, well, wait a minute. If this is, you know, such a high degree, if there's so small of a chance of it getting, you know, a false positive, then, you know, how could this be the case? Well, yeah, it's a small chance but it's a small chance in a much greater group because the group of people who don't have it, you know, is 99 times larger than the group that does have it. So, you know, even with that, uh, even with that level um, of specificity, it can uh, make the difference. And if it's even less than that, if it's a 10th of 1%, look at this, it goes down to below 8%. So it's all going to depend on these priors. And this is why the WHO was saying, as I said last week, you've got to look at things in context. You've got to consider what the person's situation is, what their symptoms are, have they been around anyone who's likely to be infected, things like that. And, you know, they say you can follow it up with another test. So just to go back to the 1% thing, because that's probably a little more realistic for a lot of places. So if we figured out that our prior is 1% and we take the test, well, we've got around a 50% chance, if we round it off, a 50% chance of having it or not having it. And you might say, well, that's a coin flip, right? Then what's the point of a test? 
And so you say, well, let's do another test. You say, well, what's the point of that? That's just going to be another coin flip, right? Well, no. Because if you remember back to those videos I made, when you do a follow-up test, or when you do anything after that, the prior probability is based on everything you know up to that point, including the results of any previous tests. So when you go in to do the next test, this posterior probability here becomes the prior probability for the next test. And so when you're looking at this, all right, we're going to do a second test, and it's going to be the same, you know, false positive and false negative rate, same sensitivity, same specificity. And we do that. Ah, see, now we're over 98% sure we have COVID if the second test comes back positive. So, I mean, that's the thing to keep in mind. You know, your doctor is going to go over all of this. That's what they did with me. You know, my doctor said, look, we're going to go ahead and take both nasal swabs for the fast 15-minute test and for the PCR. And she said, if the fast 15-minute test comes back negative, I'm not going to believe it because my symptoms were too specific. And she was pretty much sure that I have. And of course, when the PCR test came back, I did have it. Um, so when they tested my wife, uh, my doctor said to her, and I was, I was on the phone with her. She knew I wasn't eavesdropping or anything. So we were, you know, listening together, but he was saying to her, it's like, yeah, I don't need to test to know you got COVID. You got COVID because she had so many of the specific symptoms and her husband had it, you know, and of course I would have had it for days without realizing it with, you know, about you know, a thousand different chances to transmit it to her in one way or another. So it's probably a given. They did the test anyway because you needed that to, you know, get paid for being off of work. And of course, it, it came back positive. In her case, it was the rapid test that came back positive. And yeah, so you, you look at all of that in context. In both of our cases, I think hers more so than mine, it was pretty clear going into it that we had it. And the test was really kind of a formality. You know, in my case, there was probably some degree of uncertainty. When Heather took it, you know, it, it was uh, much bigger than that because, yeah, he, he was like, I don't need to, I don't need to give you a test. I know you've got it. You've got it. That prior probability in her case was so high, test wouldn't have made the difference one way or the other, but. Did the test anyway. Of course, it came back positive. These are all of the things you have to keep in mind. It was never supposed to be the case of, oh, you took a test and it came back positive. Oh, you've got COVID. This goes down into the new cases. No, no, it was never supposed to work that way. It was never supposed to be that way at all. It was always supposed to be a matter of context. What's the, even if you are infected with SARS-CoV-2, do you actually have COVID? Or, you know, because you need some additional things to actually be considered a case of COVID, you know, the symptoms and things like that. So, I mean, you've got the two extremes of it that seem to dominate the conversation. There's the fear mongering group, as represented by politicians and the news media, where every last little thing is, you know, absolute proof positive that COVID is ravaging the entire planet and it's worse than the bubonic plague and everything else. And then the other side, which seems to want to just be completely blasé about it, you know, and say, well, look, you know, there's the, the testing isn't there, you know. Oh, it's just like the flu. It is not just like the flu. Trust me on this. Take it from someone who's been from it. This is not the flu. This is not the cold. This is nothing you've ever experienced before. It's nothing like that. So uh, if I tried to describe it to you, it would be one of those colors to a blind man type of thing. No, this is something different. This is something unique. Trust me on this. Um, but yeah, I mean, as usual, the truth is somewhere in between. And things like the Bayesian inference are things that can help you tease all of that out, which is why more people need to be talking about it and why it's a shame that more people are not. And it's all just become about everyone taking up sides for whatever extreme they want to argue for. So... Uh, that's all I have for you today. Again, please leave a comment and hit like, subscribe, the bell, share it out, and do what you can to feed the algorithm. Or go over to an alternative. 
you know, like BitTube or Library or Odyssey. All the links are below. And please consider being a supporter uh, and supporting this channel in any way you can and help keep this going. I am going to try to get the uh, output on this channel getting back up uh, as my uh, energy levels get back up. I was trying to record this. It's uh, Wednesday now. I was trying to record it on Tuesday, and I was just wiped the entire day. I didn't have energy for it, so... It's it's a long, slow climb back up to normality, but I think I'm going to make it. And uh, with your help, it'll be a lot easier. So please go to donate.pagosity.tv and do what you can. Please spread this information around. Please try to counteract both the fear mongers and the deniers and just try and get some sense and sanity into the debate because that's really what we need now more than anything else. So thank you very much. Until next time, stay strong and be free.